Hello and welcome back everybody and in this video we are going to talk about the bacterial cell structure as you can see on your screen. The bacteria are most of the times uh, the prokaryotes as we all know the bacteria are classified under the kingdom Monera which includes all the prokaryotic type of cells and therefore studying the bacterial cell structure is same as that of studying a prokaryotic cell. So we will go layer by layer from the outside to inside and see what a prokaryotic cell comprises of. So the first layer of the bacterial cell as you can see outside is a jelly layer. This layer is a bit viscous and jelly layer and it is called the capsule of the bacteria. Okay. So this layer you can see in orange is called the capsule of the bacteria and this layer helps the bacteria to stick to a surface as this is jelly jelly like layer maybe I should make so this looks much better now this uh, this is rather than being a rigid box it is looking much jelly like and this helps the bacteria to stick to some surface so if this is let's say the Vibrio cholerae bacteria and this is a small intestine <coughs> the small intestine surface and then the with the help of this capsule it can stick to this surface this capsule also protects the bacteria from the WBCs some of them at least like the neutrophils as when they engulf this capsulated bacteria they cannot digest this bacteria using the lysosomes so lysosomes doesn't the li lysosomal enzymes cannot digest this capsule layer hence the bacteria is safe so that is another advantage of having a capsule outside the bacteria and it is ma uh, mainly made up of uh, polysaccharides that is sugars and polypeptides also and some interesting fact is that inside there will be a cell membrane so that cell membrane secretes the capsule layer outside the bacteria so if the bacteria has the genes to make uh, synthesize the peptides which is required for the capsule or to make uh, if the bacteria is able to make the polysaccharides and then it secretes that polysaccharides and polypeptides outside itself and makes a layer of capsule and that makes the bacteria more dangerous and it is more infectious so that is all about the outside outermost layer of the bacteria that is the capsule it should be mentioned here that this capsule has another form to it that is the slime layer as many may call <coughs> so what is the slime layer this capsule is more viscous layer so if this capsule is not arranged so tightly and is loosely arranged ar around the bacteria it is the same and made up of the same things it is the slime layer so we can also mention that over here that the capsule is same as the slime layer okay so they're the same thing yeah there they're the same thing and that's about the outermost layer so let us look a uh, layer inside what is present inside the bacteria after the capsule yes so now you can see another layer which is made inside the layer of the capsule so this layer is called the cell wall of the bacteria and this is not like the cell walls you commonly hear of the plant cells this is the cell wall which is made up of a special substance known as the peptidoglycan glycan okay so cell wall present inside the capsule or the slime layer and this cell wall let me mention some more facts about the cell wall this cell wall can be of two types found to be of two types uh, in structure in the bacteria and the f uh, due, due to the pres uh, th that the type of cell wall a bacteria possess uh, on the basis of the type of cell wall a bacteria possess we can classify this bacteria cell into two types which is the gram positive cell and the gram negative cell so that that will be uh, the di topic of discussion for the next video I suppose and for this video this is the cell wall and it will be dealt in details in the next video so 
that was it now the next layer is the cell membrane which will be inside this layer so the cell wall is completely permeable so it doesn't have any uh, selectivity to substances it will allow inside the bacteria so it may take in a harmful and also useful substances but the selectivity is done by the cell membrane which is present inside the cell wall so let me draw the membrane for you so yes we have our cell membrane inside it so you can find the cell membrane and it is really cartoon drawing of the bacteria anyways if you see look at the cell membrane you will find a head like structure and two uh, tails coming out from it we can call them tails so if we zoom into it let's see what what we find in the cell membrane the unit of the cell membrane we will zoom it and let's see what we find so this is what we find we find a head and two tails actually the tails are hydrophobic so they are they fear water and the head is hydrophilic so they love water this is what you will you should know till now so why this head loves water and why this tail fear water actually the tail is a long chain fatty acid and fatty acids are not dissolved in water so when something is not dissolving in water and it is put in water put inside water then the energy of the system increases and hence it is becoming unstable so this part is called the hydrophobic part but this part this head do you know what it consists of it consists of a phosphate group and phosphate has a charge so what does the charge do the charge helps the water which is polar to form hydrogen bonds and to form ionic bonds not bonds but partial bonds which actually stabilizes the system so this structure wants water and this structure doesn't want water so there is water outside the cell there is water inside the cell how can it arrange so actually it arranges in a bilayer form that is this structure is outside facing outside as well as this structure is facing inside the cell and this hydrophobic tails are actually present in between both of them so that is in a nutshell the structure of the lipid bilayer of the cell membrane and it is present in eukaryotes also the same type of membrane and I forgot to mention over here that this membrane will be traversed by structural proteins at some places so they let's say there is a sub structural protein over here there will be membrane proteins over here let's say there will be some structural proteins let me clear another place so this proteins will be present also so let's say that is the end of the protein so these proteins are present and this structure the blue structure is called the cell membrane cell membrane let me write it down cell membrane so till now it is well and good the bacteria possess capsule and the outermost layer which is also maybe slime layer then the cell wall then the cell membrane so what is present inside the cell membrane there will be the cytoplasm and as I had discussed in the previous video or the previous to previous video that the bacteria or the prokaryotes do not have the definitive nucleus so let us see what is present inside and how it is present okay so yes so now it looks pretty good so these are some structures which I have drawn and not labeled till now of which is I means which is present inside the bacteria cell membrane so one thing you can notice here I have removed some part of the cytoplasm again and did some of this membranous infoldings like 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 that and they are called actually sorry they are actually called the mesosomes so this mesosomes was developed uh, means discovered by F James the scientist name is F James I don't know the full name so that was mesosomes and what is the function earlier people used to think that this mesosomes 
can be present in the central region or the peripheral region. If it is in the central region, it somehow helps the bacteria to separate its chromosome during cell division. It also helps increasing the surface area. It also helps increasing or doing mitochondrial respiration, means it helps in respiration. So, all these people used to hypothesize. But recently, we have been we have been getting evidence that these mesosomes are developing due to the damaging of the cell membrane of the bacteria. These bacteria are getting antibiotics and have to deal with antibiotics. So, antibiotics are damaging the cell membrane of the bacteria <coughs> and after damaging the cell membrane of the bacteria like this it invaginates inside the damaged portion and that is what F. James uh, saw inside uh, under the microscope and termed as mesosomes. So, that is nothing else but a damaged portion of the mitochond uh, my damaged portion of the cell me cell membrane. So, another things which you can see is uh, storage granules. So, bacteria is uh, living and it requires food to generate energy. So, it also stores some food in case it is in shortage of food. So, for storage it has this structure which is just a cartoon and this means that this uh, which I meant it for glycogen. So, glycogen storage. So, bacteria has glycogen storage which is nothing but the polymerized form of glucose. So, when we break down glycogen we will get a lot of glucose and lot of glucose means lot of energy. So, that glycogen and another storage product of bacteria which is also found is the this red granules which you can see in the screen. These granules are called the volutin granules. So, let me write down the name and then I will talk about it. Volutin granules. Okay. So, volutin granules are uh, some <coughs> RNAs actually. So, wasteful RNAs. They uh, the bacteria uh, gathers all those wasteful RNAs and keeps it in store as the RNA is really rich in nitrogen and phosphorus. So, these things by using some enzymes the ba uh, bacteria can uh, take out the nitrogen and phosphorus from that RNA and use them because they are useful things really really is useful things in the synthesis of uh, the DNA and other things. So, they are re really required inside the cells. So, they will get it from this waste RNAs which has uh, uh, gathered and called gathered into granules and are called the volutin granules. <coughs> so, that was uh, the storage products the as and you can not see any membrane bound structure al already. So, you I had already discussed in the previous to previous video that bacteria uh, prokaryotes do not have any membrane bound structure such as mitochondria, chloroplast or uh, endoplasmic reticulum or centrosome or etcetera etcetera. So, these structures are not present. So, one question might arise in your mind that if the bacteria does not possess any type of mitochondria then how does it gain the energy. So, mitochondria are really required for energy. So, if does not it does not possess mitochondria then how does it have the energy. So, it turns out that the bacteria is itself uh, mitochondria piece of mitochondria. It turns out that all the proteins which are present on the surface of mitochondria for <coughs> respiration and genetic energy are present in the cell membrane. So, these proteins may be the proteins which are present in the surface of mitochondria. One example I can give you is the F0, F1 particles or the Fernander mol molar particles. So, these particles uh, constitute the ATP synthase and this particle generate ATP and this part uh, these particles are also found in some or in most of the bacteria. So, they can generate ATP from there and it has also been hypothesized that these bacteria came inside some cells infected some cells and found the environment to be pretty good and started living there and after that our cells became eukaryotic. So, that host cell which the bacteria infected at first became eukaryotic and that bacteria which infected the host cell <coughs> changed into mitochondria and started producing 
<coughs> energy for the cell sorry so that is another endosymbiosis theory which has also been proposed like that also like that the chloroplast also have developed scientists say like that okay so this can be uh, proved because the mitochondria and chloro uh, the plastids have the uh, circular dna and they are the semi uh, a semi autonomous organelles so they can if the if we remove the mitochondria they can live by itself like a bacteria leaves so that's how we can say that bacteria had at some point of time in the past infected the eukaryotic cells okay and that's how we possess the mitochondria now so that was another thing <coughs> and the bacteria also possess <coughs> this ribosomes as you can see inside the cytoplasm these ribosomes are different they are the 